Hi everyone, this is Asim from Gavishya. Uh, I'm here today with Dr. Go, who is the founder and chairperson of uh, HealthServe Limited. HealthServe Limited is one of my favorite charities which provides hope and healing to migrant workers in Singapore. Dr. Go, welcome to this ses session called Meet the Givers. Thank you so much, Asim. Yeah, nice to uh, be with you guys. Uh, so, Dr. Go, tell us a little bit more about your journey of starting co-founding HealthServe. What led you to co-founding HealthServe? Well, what led me, it's a very long story, but I'll give you a shortened version. So, uh, I started HealthServe in uh, September of 2006 with a friend of mine. We we're just talking over coffee about issues of the world. And, uh, you know, and I said, uh, I asked him if he noticed uh, increased uh, number of migrant workers and foreign workers in Singapore. And we both agreed that yes, there's definitely an increase. And then we talked about the possibility of them uh, uh, having a poor access or poor limited access to healthcare. Um, and then I suggested starting a clinic for them because I've got a, well, at that time, quite a large network of uh, medical uh, personnel, doctors and nurses. Um, and so we did. That's how we started. But uh, we were just thinking of a small, simple clinic. We had no plans whatsoever, no blueprint for something, uh, uh, you know, like uh, what we are today. Uh, if I had known, I may not have started it. <laughs> uh, so that's how we started. And, and so it started a simple GP clinic. And within a short time, we realized that a simple GP clinic uh, giving medical services or medicines alone will not. Uh, it's not holistic. We needed the whole host, the whole suite of other services like uh, social needs, uh, social services, uh, legal advisory. And then we also realized we needed to go upstream with research. Uh, and that's how the organization grew. That's great. How, how one interaction with a friend can lead to such a world-changing organization. I would like to ask you, Dr. Go. What is it that you know right now, which you wish you knew when you were starting out? Uh, so one of the things I wish I knew uh, then was the extent of uh, the plight of the migrant worker. You see, so in those days, uh, you know, we were just going to the work and we were only slowly uncovering the truth or the stories, the real stories of the migrant worker. Uh, you know, we. We never knew that migrant workers had, uh, you know, paid large sums to come to Singapore. We saw them as migrant workers uh, only when we saw them. For example, one of the early cases, or many of the early cases, uh, were very typical. So this one I saw early on was this uh, Chinese worker came to me, and then he said, you know, uh, he needed help, and I said, look, could you take some medicines? And then I said, take the medicines after meals, and he said, oh, I've not eaten for three days. At that point, I realized that, you know, uh, it's a lot more complex than what meets the eye. So, um, yeah, so we, we, I wish that we had done more, uh, uh, you know, uh, research, but yeah. So as we discovered the, uh, all the related issues surrounding a migrant worker, uh, we, you know, we, we, we got better in terms of uh, tightening up our practice, best practice, and going to areas where the gaps are. So initially, it was going quite blind, as it were, because we were new to this space. And we're still learning. In fact, this COVID-19 really showed up some gaps uh, of knowledge also, and also gaps in terms of uh, the overall uh, understanding within Singapore's uh, medical system, uh, this large group. And so, yeah, we're learning. It's a learning journey every day, really. So you mentioned bringing hope and healing to migrant workers. Can you elaborate both on what does it mean to spread hope and healing? When we first did this tagline, uh, you know, bringing healing, uh, um, inspiring hope and bridging communities, we didn't know that it would be so significant. We sort of knew because it's our vision, right? Our, our mission, our tagline. And bringing hope really uh, is key. You know, we can give all the medicines we want, but without hope, uh, the medicine is useless almost. Especially if you take COVID-19 now as a case in point. Uh, 
there's much fear and anxiety, uh, loss of hope. The loss of hope really is something very devastating for someone who is vulnerable. And so for the vulnerable communities, hope is what keeps them, you know. They can lose their money, they can lose their, even their health, and yet with hope, uh, someone coming alongside them, being with them, uh, and they know that someone cares, or a community that cares for them, uh, and their family back home uh, is encouraging them, you know, uh, that keep, keeps them going. And we see that all the time among our migrant workers, or the people we serve and uh, interact with. Would you be able to share us uh, share with us a story of hope, uh, if a personal story or story that you witnessed? Sure. Uh, you know, one of, uh, I had just spoken to a migrant worker. Uh, let's call him, oh, his name is Habib. I think it's okay. Uh, his name is Habib and he had gone back uh, to Bangladesh in December only to find out that he can't come back because he had gone back because his mother suddenly passed away. Uh, he had been in Singapore for four years uh, and uh, six months into Singapore, coming to Singapore, he had come to see us in the clinic and was so inspired. He volunteered with us as his, uh, just to help around. He could speak a little English and uh, he's, oh, he has been a part of our health serve community since uh, coming to Singapore. Uh, he comes down to the clinic every day. He's going out with us, interacting with us, our volunteers and all, as one of our volunteers. And uh, so December, he had go back, uh, you know, to see, uh, because his mom uh, passed away. And uh, so I, I called him just uh, last week. I said, Habib, how are you doing? Because now he can't come back, right, because of lockdown. He told me, you know, uh, Dr. Go, I just lost my job. My employer uh, told me that, you know, uh, he can't, you know, uh, he's cancelled my work permit. And he says, I fully understand. Um, my employer is good. Uh, he has looked after the rest of the, his colleagues who are still in Singapore. They're all, all paid, given lodging, even though it's uh, uh, lodging and food despite the lockdown. But he says, it's really sad, you know, that he has been in Bangladesh. And what has given give me hope, he said. And you know, Dr. Go, uh, in, since coming back in December for the last few weeks, I've been doing food distribution in my village. I said, oh, wow. Uh, how about your money, your funding? He says, well, you know, I actually have some savings uh, because I worked in Singapore for four years. Uh, and because many people come to me uh, really desperate, especially the rickshaw uh, pullers, rickshaw drivers. I said, wow. And, uh, and so to see someone like Habib, uh, you know, doing this uh, really gives me a sign of hope. It's just really a sign of hope I see um, in our world today. Yeah, that's great to hear. Um, and the other aspect of uh, your, your mission is around healing. Uh, could you share about that? Like what are some of the psychological um, issues or what are some of the suffering that migrant workers uh, might experience? Um, um, you know. Sure. I think healing, you know, we, it's not just absence of disease. Uh, if, it were, if it were just absence of disease, it would be really easy. You know, I'll give you Panadol, it kills a fever and a headache. But beyond that, uh, really the problem is, is uh, biopsychosocial. You know, the psycho and social part is important. So uh, the issues on migrant workers are many. So starting from home, uh, being in a vulnerable community, many of them, for example, uh, are, in, uh, are in debt. They come in, in debt because back home, their farms may have failed uh, or there's uh, some, uh, some catastrophe in, in the family, disaster of sorts or, or problem, and they are in debt. And they, they pay a middleman uh, to come to Singapore thinking that it can work uh, to earn enough to pay back you know, and to start life anew only to find that the pay they get really is very little and that they are in a debt bondage. And so they come with issue, financial issue. Uh, now that will then add on to the uh, mental issue that they will have. Many of the Bangladeshis, for example, are the, could be the youngest or brightest 
son in the family and the family sells everything and you know all the hope is put on the shoulders of this young man uh, so there's lots of expectation uh, and honor the family put on this young man uh, to come to Singapore to work uh, in the Chinese uh, situation or context uh, is usually the breadwinner the father of the family who comes so they come much older in terms of age again the entire family uh, um, well-being and future depends on this one person and so they come here with lots of stress um, and when you go to a different culture like Singapore the moment you come here the cross-cultural adaptation is not simple uh, different language different food different uh, expectations and you are uh, disadvantaged because there's a power distance and you're already in debt and uh, you're vulnerable so uh, that really adds to the whole stress of the of the migrant worker. In the workplace, he's then made to do work he's not familiar with. They could come from an agricultural background, uh, or, when, or, or many of them are also uh, could be high school graduates or even college graduates who come here, uh, thinking they are doing you know a, a job that's uh, much uh, less uh, manual and end up being construction workers. Uh, and that can be quite devastating for many of them. Then again, loss of family ties. They don't get to see the children or the family. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that's another very big issue. So emotional, uh, social, psychosocial, and even the spiritual aspect, loss of a, a support community for many of them uh, can add up to something uh, very, very stressful. And with COVID-19, isolation, uh, and, and, you know, uncertainty, not knowing what's going on because you don't have things uh, or information and asymmetry of information is another big problem uh, for the vulnerable communities like migrant workers. And uh, in the midst of uh, COVID-19, what are some of the approaches uh, HealthServe Limited is taking to continue to provide hope and healing to migrant workers? So HealthServe, we have approached this multi-prong. Uh, at a medical level, we are getting uh, our volunteers, which have, the numbers have dropped by 90%, but uh, we are doing uh, now concentrating on the mental uh, well-being of our, uh, our brothers, migrant brothers, because we feel that that's really key. The hope, sustaining this hope for them and this connectedness and being their friend at this time. So we've got multiple teams. Uh, of counselors, for example, that's, uh, that's uh, in place now. Um, and, and also our, our own clinic, we are having uh, doctors now help out uh, in some of the, in the dormitories. We, have, we provide uh, education, health education. So again, we have done health education in terms of translation. Uh, our teams have come up with simple videos on what is COVID-19, uh, we have done videos on personal hygiene, on mental well-being, and uh, all in their languages. So we've uh, got lots of volunteers who come and do translation for us, help us with uh, the, uh, the material. So that's, that's what we've been doing. And we also go upstream, uh, you know, to, to advocate for the workers. Recently, we saw an outpour of generosity on GiveAsia for HealthServe Limited. We saw a blogger uh, by the name of Pretty Please who raised funds for HealthServe. We've also seen lots of uh, grassroots movements by people who set up fundraising to pay forward their government solidarity payments. Uh, what is um, your message to the fundraisers, donors, and how does that make you feel? You know, um, when I saw the funders uh, on Give, Asia, it was really, I was so inspired. I mean, it was really moving and inspiring for me. And, uh, you know, for all of you listening in, I just want to really thank you uh, on behalf of the team and from the bottom of my heart. You know, that there's really hope for humanity because of you guys. So, yes, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the funding has come in and I think the outpouring of generosity, not just, not just financially, but also, you know, coming forward to help, uh, uh, really shows that we are really connected. There is uh, empathy and deep connectedness in common humanity. And um, so that's, uh, I'll say, uh, you know, 
Fantastic. And another thing you could do uh, is to come to our solidarity wall. We've got a website where you could post uh, your messages of encouragement uh, to our migrant brothers. And uh, I think that's really important for them to know that not just the family or uh, the employers or health serve looking after them, but there is a larger family uh, which includes all of you uh, and Give Asia that's with them. And you know, if you look at the messages, we've got even, I think, Bangladeshi and, and Indian celebrities chipping in too. Uh, and I think that's, uh, together, I think it has been very heartwarming uh, and truly inspiring. Thank you, Dr. Go. On behalf of Give Asia as well, we really, um, we really are very pleased with the work health uh, service doing on behalf of everyone in Singapore who uh, cares about migrant workers and wants to see them in the best of health. Um, uh, what, what is the message that you are sending um, to the migrant workers right now and their families uh, in, in this time of distress uh, where they have been quite uh, negatively affected? I think the main message we are giving them is that, uh, uh, that we are with you in this, we are all in this together. Because HealthServe aims to be that reassuring and familiar voice uh, in this time of uncertainty and, and, and anxiety. And we want to bring hope, bridge communities and, 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 and bring healing uh, to them. And so really, I think, uh, you know, with Give Asia coming alongside and with us, I think uh, we are really all in this together. Their families, the doctors, the donors, uh, our volunteer counsellors, everybody we're at this, in this together. And I think the migrant workers, our migrant brothers are also, uh, you know, we're also having them uh, participate with us, uh, doing peer counseling, just being involved together. So I think the message is we're in this together. Thank you. Do you have any tips for other charities and nonprofit organizations who are trying to move to online, whether it's term of fundraising and also this new uh, future of work where they are working remotely. Are there any tips that you would like to share with them? Uh, well, I, I think the virtual world has sort of been, been thrust upon us and it's been really quite an exciting journey. Uh, it's really discovering uh, new relationships, new connectedness uh, with people we have never known and I assume it's great to meet with you too today, right? For example, I think that's fantastic. So I think uh, to charities or to young startups, uh, I think be open. I think collaboration is one. Uh, generosity is one. I think the, the ability to share what we have uh, could be finances, uh, expertise, manpower, or any resource. I think collaboration and sharing, uh, it helps uh, the organization blossom. And you really attract people uh, to you and for people to give when they know that you are generous with what you have. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Go. I would just uh, like to share with everyone that you can go to give.asia and search for Health Serve Limited. Uh, you will find lots of uh, campaigns that people have started. You can also become a monthly donor uh, for the work of Health, Health Serve. Uh, my last question for, for you uh, would be, what is your hope for Singapore in the post-COVID crisis, after the post-COVID? situation wow. that's a big question <laughs> you know my biggest hope is that at the end of this that we will uh see and see our migrant brothers as really brothers uh and you know is that community is just not our local them and us but uh it is a global village uh i think to celebrate diversity and this celebration of diversity is to carry on my dream is it will carry on it will deepen and it will really enrich the entire Singapore in our context and also uh, the world beyond. Thank you so much, Dr. Go. It was really a pleasure talking to you and uh, I wish you all the best in the work you do and thanks for doing what you do. Thanks, Asim, and all the best too.